Hello again, and thank you for joining us for today's webcast. Our webcast today is titled, What to Inspect When You're Inspecting, a Hands-On Guide to Reviewing Samples from Your Authority Control Vendor. We are broadcasting today from Provo, Utah and Fort Collins, Colorado. I am Beth Ann Goodwill, Backstage Account Manager for the Lower Midwest and Southern United States. And I have the pleasure to introduce today's presenter. Nate Cothran is president of Backstage Library Works. When he first signed on for this webinar, he was the vice president of automation services, but still wanted to proceed with conducting this presentation today. As VP of automation services, Nate built the team providing authority control and other automation processes to Backstage clients. He brings to Backstage a strong understanding of consumer needs, years of supervisory experience, and a well-rounded knowledge of the library automation industry. During his 16 years with us, Nate has been responsible for all sorts of automation projects, including Marcadia record matching, barcode creation, authority control, internal software development, hardware maintenance, and RDA enrichment. Nate is also a certified project management professional. Today's webcast will be recorded, and that recording along with the slides will be available to you in a couple of weeks. We will definitely email you that link for review and to share with any colleagues. As a reminder, your lines are muted today, so please direct any questions or comments through the chat window. You're also welcome to join the audio via our phone line, which the information was posted. I'm not sure if Richard can put that up quickly again or not. Um, but you can dial in that way as well. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Nate so he can tell us all about what to inspect when we're inspecting. Thanks a lot, Beth Ann. I appreciate that. Everyone, thank you very much for attending this webinar today. Um, first, I'd like to start off with a poll. We'll have two different polls uh, throughout this presentation. We'll also do a question and answer period at the end. But throughout the presentation, feel free to enter in questions as they come to you in the chat. And some of our uh, people, Casey Cheney and Leanne Lavender, as well as Chad Clough, will try to address those questions either through the chat or if we can't do so at that time, then we'll save them for the end and we'll address them then. This webinar, or sorry, this poll is uh, what type of role do you fill at your library? And we were thinking that this might help us get a good sense of the kinds of people that are interested in attending this webinar. And just to let you know, this webinar will be fairly technical, but I'll, uh, my aim is to uh, present this in a way that it's uh, easy to jump into and understand what we're doing. And I'll make sure I go slow enough. And it's not because, it's usually because I talk too fast, I think, during some webinars. So I'm going to try to really make an effort to slow down and walk you through the process. And um, this is also intended when you look at the when you go through the results, when we look through the various resources that we use, um, you can check out this webinar at a later point and also review those if you want. So, so far, most of our attendees appear to be from cataloging, metadata, and technical services, which is good. Um, that's kind of where we geared this presentation for. This is more of a narrow-focused presentation as, as opposed to some of our other we webinars, which is kind of widening the net in order to get people uh, to attend. So I think this looks good. Maybe allow a few more moments to enter an option. But you know, nearly 85% of attendees are cataloging metadata or technical services. So this will be right up your alley, I think, as far as um, you know, the kinds of resources, resources that we have available that we also want to give to you to kind of make sure everything looks the way it should within your results. OK, great. So I'm going to do a lot of sharing my screen for this presentation. Let me analyze that. So we have a backstage background here. The purpose of this webinar is to give you the tools to search through the results that we deliver from backstage. Uh, we want to show you how to find what you're looking for. And a lot of the, when I think about this, I think about needles in the haystack. And I know that's kind of cliche, but it's really that kind of case where through the processing, there are a lot of needles that are kind of scattered throughout your 
records, we want to give you the tools and the knowledge and the expertise to find those needles and make sure that they exist where they should exist or that they aren't where they uh, that they aren't there where they should not be there. I'll talk about the relationship between our reports, files, uh, the wiki, and the profiles. Um, reviewing a sample and ensuring your expectations are met goes a long way toward giving you that confidence that you need uh, that your full processing will run as expected. Okay, so first, uh, oh, does everybody have their packets? Um, we sent out some packets, I think, uh, a couple weeks before the well, hang on a second here. I've been informed that uh, packets were not sent out, and actually I'm just joking. Um, everything you need for today's webinar is included in the zip file. And the zip file, I'm just go ahead, I'm again sharing my screen here. This is an email that uh, was sent out earlier, and it contained a couple of links in there. One of the links was this bit.ly.bslw uh, webinar zip. So um, within that zip file, we'll click on that link here in just a second there, but we'll We'll find a markview.exe program. So if you're on a Macintosh, that this may actually not work for you. And so in that case, this might be something that you can uh, just follow along as I navigate things here. This markviewer program, though, it's a read-only utility for mark records. Um, we'll spend a lot of time with that. We'll also have reports in that zip file. That includes the HTML files as well as Excel. There are different formats of the same report, but they, they can be useful in different ways. Uh, we'll also have MARC files. And these, for this uh, sample, they'll end in .mrc, but it doesn't, uh, a MARC file doesn't need to end in .mrc. It can end in .txt or any extension you want, as long as the program that you're using to open it can uh, read and, and traverse MARC files. We'll, do, we'll really dig deep, though, when we look at the mark files themselves, and we'll look at the results and compare, compare, compare. That's the, the I, I guess, the idea behind this webinar is we want to compare the original records with the process records and make sure everything that we have in, in place is working as expected. Uh, we'll look at the online wiki and profiles. We can switch over to those. And I've got to remember to zoom so it's a little bit more legible. So here's the profiles. We'll go through some of those. And then here is the wiki, and yeah, we'll look at some, of that, some of that as well. Okay, so let's go back to this document real quick, and we're going to click on this link to download. So it's right here in the bottom left. It's downloading that, and I'm going to click on it. It's going to bring it up here. Great. So let me minimize some of these. So we have this zip file in here. We don't want to work from the zip file itself. We want to bring things over to our desktop. So let's just right click our desktop. And it's uh, like a new folder. So we'll just call this webinar. And then we'll go into that. I'll we'll bring this over here just so we can see it. And let's highlight everything in here. Control A, or go to the very top and hold down Shift, go to the very bottom, and just drag it on over here to the webinar. We'll close the zip file. We don't need that anymore. Still going over here, so while it's doing that, adding our mark view program, our reports as well as uh, the reports in Excel and HTML. And in, if you haven't done it already, sort by type. So the Mark View program is at the top, and then the reports, and then at the very bottom, the actual Mark files that we'll be looking at today. All right, so the Mark View program, this was originally written by Stephen Yates. Um, he's one of our elite programmers. He still works for us, and that's fantastic. Uh, we're happy to use this utility and push it out uh, for others to use. Let's double click on Mark View. So this is a standalone program. You don't need to install anything. It just opens right up uh, from there. And we're going to open up sample.mrc. So you go back to that webinar folder you created on your desktop. It's this one down here. Uh, you can't 
you can't drag and drop, unfortunately. So that's one uh, limitation there. But what you can do is go to the address bar and just click in there, and then Control C will copy, or just right click and copy, and then go to Mark View Program, and there's an option where it says Open. You click on that and paste your pathway in there, your address. And you're in there, but it says no items match your, your search. And so that's the reason The reason why is uh, Mark View is expecting um, uh, Mark files that end in .oc, but let's change that to all files. So now everything shows up. But the file that we want is the sample.mrc file. So we'll have to scroll all the way down, and there it is. We can select it, or you can always just type it in there and select it like that. And you hit open. OK. So this comes up, and we'll, we're going to customize this, OK, because we're not quite satisfied with the way it looks right now. But first, I, I, it may look a little small on your screen, depending on whether or not you're following, following along with me, or uh, whether you have uh, open mark view and you're trying things out on your side. But let me point out a couple of things uh, real quick here. So we have the open. This is the open file dialog. We've already gone through that. You have home. Click on home. It doesn't do anything right now because you're on the first record. The first record will always show up when you hit home. Okay, and then you hit previous. I'll go to the previous record. And you want on the oh, you can't do the scroll bar. So, but you can hit next, and the next will go to the next record. So now previous will work, but we still can't hit that scroll bar. So what you want to do here is press end. When you go to end, it goes through the entire file, sort of reads it into memory, and then allows you now to use that scroll bar to your heart's content. You can go anywhere you want there. Um, and then there's a go to. We might go to a specific record, like say record 500. So you go there now, and if you look down the bottom left, it says record number 500, total records 5,000, as well as some other uh, perhaps useful information. Then there's a search box, and we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in that, but let's go ahead and cancel out of the search box for now. So we look at this record, this mark record right here, and it's uh, looks okay, but I want the font to be bigger, and I want to change uh, various colors as well, just to, so it's not so glaring. So let's go to uh, the Edit menu, and we'll go to Font, and we'll select Calibri. I don't want to search for it, so I'll just type in C-A-L. We find it right there, and let's change the font size to 24. Okay, so that's a lot bigger, and hopefully that looks a little bit better on your screen. But still, we're like, oh, you know, I don't know about the text colors. And so let's change that. Let's go to Font Color, Edit. And we'll do Font Color. And then here comes a color dialog box that comes up. We want to choose Define Custom Colors. Then we have Hue, Saturation, Luminance. Then we have Red, Green, and Blue. We want to go in the red box. We'll change that to 170. The green is going to be 204. You just hit tab to go to the next one. And the blue is going to be 255. So it's kind of like a light blue. Let's add to custom colors. You click add, and you notice it goes over there, but we still have to select it. If we hit OK, it might not let us choose the right color. So we select that light blue over here, hit OK, and changes all of our text. So that, that looks, you know, that's, that's a change. It's not quite where we want it yet. Let's change the background color real quick. Go to background color, exact same thing, edit. Go to define custom colors. I'm going to go back to that red box where it says 255. Change that to 34. And the green to 34. And then the blue to 51. That looks black, but it's not, it's not quite black. So add the custom colors. We're going to do that. And again, you've got to click on that left one right under here. And you hit OK. Oh, OK, so that. That makes things look a little bit better, but now our subfield markers are a little washed out unless we highlight them. Well, we don't want to highlight them all the time. Um, so let's go to Edit. We'll go to Subfield Color. This one's easy. We're just going to choose White. So it's that bottom right of all these colors over here. Just choose White. Hit OK. Voila. Now we have this customized the way that we want it, at least for this presentation. If you wanted to customize this a different way, it will remember this each time you open Mark View, so you won't have to do this every time. So now we can scroll through here. Look at every record. We'll have this kind of color scheme going on. And it makes it easier, perhaps, to uh, distinguish between subfields sub and different fields that, are, that exist. OK, 
Okay, now we're going to do some searching, okay? So for a while, we've been in the sample.mrc file, right? That was the first file that we opened. Now we want to open the bib.mrc file. So we go to the open dialog box, and it's default is a sample, but we see the bib that we want. It's at the very top of your webinar folder. Just click on that, hit open, or double click. Great, so now we have the bib file, but what happened to the sample file? We don't want that to go away either. Well, the good news is it's still there, actually. We just go to Window, and then Tile Vertical. So now we have the bib file on the left. Um, and the sample file on the right. If yours are reversed, that's okay. Just know that one of them is the bid file and one of them is the sample file. So we're in record 500. I think we, nope, I guess we're in a different record. So let's go to record 500. Let's hit that go to box. You can also hit F4. I'll just click on it. It's already got 500 in there. It remembers what we had last time. So we hit OK. So now we're in record 500. But we want to look at record 500 in the bid file. So Let's do that. The exact same thing, go to. We're just choosing the bid file, hitting OK. Now we're in the uh, the 500th record. And we want to grab this text right here in the 490 where it says OECD Economic Surveys. Just just that. Great left. Highlighted it. Right click and copy or just Control C. Okay, then we're going to do a search. And we're not going to do a T-constraint. If yours has this checked, then just uncheck this where it says T-constraint. So we want it to look like this. And then we're just going to, if there's anything in there, and there probably won't be because it's the first time you've opened this program, but if there is anything, just highlight it uh, by doing a shift in or shift home, depending on where you're at. And then paste this OECD economic surveys in there. Hit OK, or press Enter, whichever one. And it'll find the first instance of that text within uh, the mark file itself. So the first instance we find it in a 245 field. If you hit F3, F3 will go to the next instance of what you're looking for. Okay, so let's hit F3 a couple times. We got a 245. Again with the 245. This one's in a 490. Back to the 245s. Keep just hitting F3. There's another 490. So there's some in 490s and some in 245s, and so we think to ourselves, well, what if we only want to look for this when it shows up in a 4xx field? We don't care about the 245 fields right now. <laughs> so how do we do that? Again, we're going to be in the bid file. Now we're going to explore something called a T constraint. So we'll go open up this search box. We're going to, this time we are going to check where it says T constraint. So we want that checked. We're going to keep this text in here. We're not going to hit OK yet. We're going to go into this text box here. For the T-constraint, real quick, this is a backstage-only method to search across MARC files extremely efficiently. Okay, It's, it's just uh, ideal. And we use this a lot. We've used this um, for the last, I don't know, I want to say 15, 20 years at Backstage. And so a lot of us have become experts at it. And by the end of this presentation, you might become an expert as well. Um, so we're in the text box. We have our text in there. We've checked the T-constraint thing. We want to type in this, t equals 4xx equals 4, so it's a space equals 4, with a double quote, and then a double quote at the end. And the good thing is about when I type in these uh, commands, I, I believe Chad is entering uh, the same search strings that we're looking for in the chat box. So if I type too fast or if it looks too small on your screen, take a look at the chat box, and that will show you exactly what we're searching for here. So in this case, the t equals 4xx, that's showing you that we're looking for any tag that is in the 4xx range. It might be a 410, it might be a 440, it might be a 490, for example. The equals 4 tells you that we're looking for a certain textual string that could be case insensitive. Okay, So this OECD is all caps with economic surveys. If that was all lowercase or if it was all uppercase, it wouldn't matter. We'd find that, that text within the record, and we'll showcase that later here. So anyways, we have the t equals 4xx equals 4 with the OECD economic surveys. And we'll hit OK. And it asks us, are you sure this is what you want? Yep, this is what we want. And you can see right here it normalizes it anyway to all uppercase. We hit yes. We find a 490 with an OECD economic survey. You notice on the 245 that still exists, but we didn't. it didn't highlight it from there because it's trying to find the first 4xx that has that text. 
you hit, then when you hit F3, it finds another record with that 490 that has that text in there. But if you look at the 245, it says Australia. So this looks like it's working. It's only finding the, the things that we want it to find based on that T constraint. So you hit F3 again. You hold down F3. It just finds 490s. So it looks like only 490s possibly have that text in there. All right, so let's go to the profile real quick here. Let me just showcase how you can look at the profile and try to find something based on what you've entered in the profile and then confirm whether or not that happened within the processing as well. We're going to go to the authority control profile okay, right here. And you don't necessarily need to be logged in to see this, but you can just view the screen itself here. So this is a test library, step four on the authority control, the output, field graphic output, step two, four dash two, backstage change stamp. This is where we're going to add an O4O, subfield D, U, T, O, R, B, L, W, only on changed records. We're not going to do anything with the 005, but we are going to add a 907B also on the changed records only with Mars in it. Okay, so let's take a look at our MarkView program and see if that actually happened. So we go back to MarkView. Uh, let's do another search here. We're going to do a search also in the bib file, okay, so not the sample file. We're going to go to the bib file. You can hit F2 or click on that search button. And we have this highlights whatever your last search was, which makes it easy to just delete it. So let's get rid of that. Just delete all that. And then we're going to type in another search here. T equals 040 equals 4 U T O R B L W. And we just move this down here. So this is kind of the text that we're looking for right here. We're looking for and you probably know this now, we're looking for any tag that's, well, we're looking for an 040 tag. It has to be an 040 tag. And case insensitive, it has to have that code in there. So let's do a search on that. Is this what you want? Yes. Great. So it finds records with the UTORBLW. And you can see that when we did the search, again, bringing up the search box, we had all lowercase, but it found this one with some of them uppercase and some lowercase. So it equals 4. Let you know that we're looking. We don't care what the case is. We just want to find that code. Hit OK again. Just to so there it is. Press F3. There's another one. In fact, let's just hold down F3. There's a lot of them. A lot of these records have that UTORBLW in there. Um, how can we be sure that every record has that one in there? Well, let's take a look for records that don't have that in there. So I'll hit F2 or search box again. And we want the exact same. We're not going to change anything in here. But we, well, we are going to change something in here, but we want to keep most of what we have. We're just going to add an exclamation point before that equals 4. That exclamation point says not equal to. So now we're looking for an 040 that it does exist in the record, but that code does not exist. So let's see what happens here. Great. So it highlights the entire 040 field and lets us know that we don't see that UT. ORBLW in there. We hit F3 again. This one that's a longish O4O, but it doesn't have that data in there. This one as well. Hold it down a little bit. So none of these have that O4O in there, which is okay because we, with the change records, we don't necessarily expect every record to be changed. Let's go back to our profile though. So the profile was saying, OK, add the O4OD with that code on change records. But also, in addition to that, add a 907B with Mars also on the change records. So now let's check both of those and see whether that happened. We'll go to F2. We'll press the search button again. And we're going to take out that exclamation point. OK, so T, the original o 4 l equals 4 with that code. Do a space ampersand, space T equals 907 equals 1. So now this tells us we're looking for the 040 with that code, but we also want to look for a 907 field. The equals 1 says whether something exists. So uh, equals 1 would be uh, we're looking, we expect to find a 907 field. So this will find records with an 040 and a 907. So we hit enter. Great. And so you can see right here the 907B Mars is highlighted because that was the last thing in our T constraint that we had specified. If you go up here, the O4L also has the UTORBLW there. You have three again. You can see that right there. 
that continues to be there. In fact, there seems like there's a lot of these that exist as well, right? Okay, so both 040 and 907 should be updated in changed records, but how can we be sure this happened? Let's do the F2 again, the search. And we're going to search for 040 that does not have that code, but there is a 907. So what do we expect to happen here? If we search for an 040 that doesn't have that code, but there is a 907 field, well, there shouldn't be any of those. So let's see what happens here. And there is not, uh, there are not any of those records because on the change records we had specified in the profile that we want the 040 code and the 907 only on change records. So if um, if one or the either one or the other exists, but the other one doesn't exist, for example, then that means something went wrong. Let's make sure on this though. Let's go ahead and search the reverse of that. So an 040 that does have that code, but there is no 907 field. So that exclamation point is before the equals one. Again, we should not find any of these either. And this is in the bib file. If you're searching in a sample file, it might have a different result because the processing hasn't been done at that point. So our programming only added or updated the 040 and the 907 if the record was changed. No records exist with one field but not the other. So this can be useful as you search through your records if you're looking for specific criteria that might conform to, you know, something where something should exist but maybe this other field doesn't need to exist. These T constraints can be really useful to quickly search through and iterate through those uh, records to find that. Let's do another search. Let's go back to the profile. And this time we're going to go to the RDA profile. We're going to go to step four again. And we're going to go to step four dash four. This is where we convert the 260 to 264. So let's go back to our mark. Uh, and this one says check yes. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Let's go to the sample file. So that's either on your right side or left side, but it should say sample. We'll hit F2. We'll do the search box. We don't care about this last T constraint, so we'll just, you can just type right now or just hit delete. I'll just hit delete. T equals 260 equals 1. So we're just looking for a 260 field that exists in uh, the sample.mrc file. And you'll notice that some of these say forward, backward, absolute. It defaults to absolute. That means it's searching from the very beginning of the file, um, you know, to the end. But you can have it search backward from your current position or forward, uh, you know, depending on your preference. I always prefer absolute. But anyway, so we hit OK, looking for just a 260 field. So we find some. Hold down F3 if you want to go to the next record. And we're just going to keep doing that. There's a lot of records with 260 fields in the sample.mrc file. Let's do a search again, F2 with a button. And we're just going to change the 260 to the 264. Okay. Again with the absolute search from the beginning. So now we're looking for 264 fields in the sample.mrc file. You go F3 and you hold that down. There's a lot of 264 fields as well. And so if we go back to the profile, convert 260 to 264, and then back to the mark view program, let's go into the bid file now. We'll do a search, F2. And this time we'll look for 260 fields. And so with the processing in place with the RDA enrichment, uh, this library chose to convert its 260 fields to 264 fields. And if this behaves as expected, then there should be no 260 fields in the bib record, in the bib.mrc file. So hit OK. There's no 260 fields at all. So all of the 260 fields that were in the that were in the original records were converted over to 264 fields. Okay. All right, let's do another, just real quick, another example here. We're going to 4-5 in the RDA profile. And yeah, let's go up just a little bit. Okay. This is the physical description of the 300 field. All physical detail abbreviations in the 300 subfield B. This is where we're spelling out abbreviations such as ILL period to illustrations, so that kind of thing. So let's go to our mark view program. We're going to be searching for that data. All right, now in the sample file, 
So we can make sure you have the sample file. Hit F2, that search button. In this case, we're just going to type. So T equals 300, S equals B equals 4, double quote, ILL, backslash, period, then double quote. So this says T equals 300. We already got that. That's a 300 field that we only care about. Then we have this new kind of S equals B. The S, as you probably know, means subfield. So subfield equals B, and then equals 4, ILL. And then we have a backslash period. With certain kinds of punctuation, you have to backslash it out if you, or escape it out if you're trying to search specifically for that punctuation. In this case, we specifically want to see if there's an ILL with a period after it as opposed to uh, you know, a U or, or US or, or something like that. So we're looking for a 300 subfield B with ILL period in the sample file. We hit yes, or we found one. I don't think there's that many. There's another one right here. There's another one. There you go. In fact, let's do it again because I don't think there's that many. We're going to do a, uh, an account real quick. So there's one, two, three, four, five, Six. That's it. There are just six records with that ILL period in the 300 field. So now let's go over to the bib.mrc file, do that same search, just hit F2, have that exact same search that we just barely did right now. So we don't have to change anything, just hit OK. And we can't find anything. So that means the 300 field, set field B, was updated from ILL period to illustrations. But, you know, we want to be absolutely sure that happened, you know. So we're not going to look at all six examples, but let's at least look at maybe the, we'll do the second one. Okay, so we have this ILL period. This is record 157 that we can see down here. And the bit file is going to be in the same order. We'll hit go to, type in 157. Okay, so let me just highlight this row. So we have this 300 field, one online resource, V, 97 pages, then it has that set field B illustration. So it started out with ILL period, and then through the processing and through uh, alt tabbing here, through the profile, we had checked to have these abbreviations spelled out, and that's what happened here. The ILL period was spelled out to illustrations. So that's another way to kind of take a look through the profile itself, look at the options that you've chosen and to make sure that that actually happened during processing. And then, uh, lastly, kind of for the, the, the searching here, I do want to introduce um, regular expressions here. I'm not going to go crazy with these. You can go really crazy with regular <laughs> expressions. Just talk to Steve or Chad. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and start in the sample file. And we'll do a search. We're going to just start typing or press delete. T equals 010, S equals A, equals 4. And then we have a caret. This is a shift, and then the number 6 is your caret. So we're going to have an opening bracket, 0 through 9, closing bracket, and a plus sign. And then we have that ending quote. So again, nothing too crazy here, but you can probably already tell what we're looking for here. We have an 010, so we're looking for an LCCN, subfield A only even though they can have subfield D, but in this case we only care about subfield A. And we're looking for anything that, any subfield A in the O1O that starts with, that's what the caret means, that means starts with at least one number. That bracket 0 through 9 bracket means a number, because uh, that's all the digits of a number. And then the plus sign means it could be more than one number. So it might be eight numbers, it might be two, or just, it might be one, for example. So let's do a search for that. Great, so we have an 010 with uh, subfield A, and it has this eight-digit number, 70431412. So that's three a couple times, a few times. We have this 010 right here, has subfield Zs, and um, they all start with not numbers. They have like an SC or SN. But the 010A that we search for has those numbers starting that subfield. So why does this matter? Let me bring up another uh, link here. This is part of our wiki, which, of course, you're free to look at at any time there. But this shows you some of the corrections that we do to the LCCN, uh, depending on if it's a structure A or structure B. And in this case, 
uh, here's an example with the hyphen, 95 hyphen, et cetera. We correct it to this, and we take out the hyphen, we add some spacing if it doesn't exist. And so in this case, we have three spaces preceding the number, and the three spaces correspond to the prefix that is associated with an LCCN. So let's Alt-Tab. Well, let's just go back and select this thing here. So we have this uh, LCCN right here that starts with a number. Let's do the same search on a bib.mrc file just to see what it turns up. Again, the exact same search. We're not changing anything. Well, we can't find any of those. And that, actually, that's another good sign there. That means that we made changes to the O1L or to these LCCN structure A to make sure that they don't they no longer begin with a, a number. So let's go back to our sample file. And it's on record 19, as you can see down here. So we'll go to the bib file. We'll hit the go to button. Just type in 19, press enter. And now you see this is the new 010 tag. The other one started immediately with those numbers. Now this one has, well, let's take a look here. So we're right after the subfield A. One, two, three. So it has three spaces that we added as part of our processing in order to um, update the standard uh, for that O and L field. Uh, and one thing I did want to point out, this other link here for regular expressions by example, this is really brief, it's super brief, but it might be a good introduction before you kind of go down the rabbit hole of looking at regular expressions. They can seriously get uh, very long and confusing, and so uh, we try to not be like that during the presentation itself there. But it's a good resource for at least starting out, you know, if you're interested in learning more about regular expressions. Okay, so let me close these down. We'll keep that open there. And we're going to jump back into um, the, the Adobe Connect here. We're going to do another poll. This is our a second poll of two. This question uh, is asking, how much time do you typically spend when reviewing results from vendors? And it might be little or no time, an hour or two, here and there, a few days, several days, weeks at a time. And this is a question we're just really curious about. As a vendor, we spend our own amount of time depending on the project and the size of the project as well as the size of the sample that we're looking at and our own quality assurance that we do. But we wonder whether that time spent on our side was mirrored uh, for you as well. Okay. So we've got some kind of Run of the gamut here from not a whole lot of time uh, to, uh, you know, a little bit here and there, almost a day-ish. And some people spend weeks at a time. And again, I'm sure that's really dependent on the types of results that you're getting um, and whether or not you have the staff or resources available on your side to go through that in more detail. I know all of those things can impact the time that you can spend as well on this. I think a lot of it, too, with vendors, the hope is that, of course, they're doing their due diligence on their side, which is our side, to ensure that um, the amount of time that you spend on your side is as minimal as possible. All right, okay. So it looks like the, the running favorite so far is little or no time, as well as several hours. Um, well, it seems to be, and then the, an hour or two. So it seems between several hours and not much at all. And then, of course, uh, down at the bottom, it could be weeks at a time. So one extreme, perhaps, to another. Spins. Great. OK, so let me go back to sharing the screen. I see that you have been answering questions. I really appreciate it. also appreciate the fact that I think, for the most part, you're getting a lot of uh, good responses. And whatever we haven't addressed in the prompt, we'll make sure to do so at the end of the, the webinar itself. OK, so let's go to the profile again. This is the authority control profile step 2.6. Clean up. 
field conversions and additions. This is where we make different kinds of conversions to certain fields, very specific fields within the record. They might be obsolete fields, for example. But we also, in some very specific circumstances, add an 007 field. And I'll go ahead and show you that. There's only three 007 fields that we add. And there has to be criteria within the record to satisfy, to be satisfied for us to add that. But this particular library said, let's turn off the option to add 007 fields. Well, one thing to look at here, let me bring this up here. This is one of our reports. Is to check for the presence or absence of a, a particular report. The R67, um, it says, in each of the records listed in this report, Mars 2.0 added an 007 field containing the field data shown. So if we have an R67 field or report that was output with the results, that means that we added an 007 field. If there is no R67 field, R67 report, that means we did not add the 007 field. So let's go to our folder that we opened, the webinar folder. And we'll just highlight, just you know, so we can see a range here. We have an R63, 68, and R70, but no R67. And that's in the Excel reports, just to be sure. 63 through 70. Again, no R67. So that also can be helpful. Um, especially if you turn on the option to receive all the reports for your sample. And that's something you can do. There's no extra charge to doing that. Um, and it could be useful to say, okay, well, there's no R67 report generated, so therefore no R, uh, no 007 field for added. So that's one, one possibility. Let me show you another possibility. This is in the Authority Control Profile, Step 3.1, the generic name headings. So a generic name heading is where you might have Smith, John, but there's no other qualifying information such as a birth or death date or an alternate form of the name. Um, and so it's just very generic. And in this case, we have the option to match against those generic name headings and flip if we want to match or to not match against them. And in this case, this library said let's not match against the generic name headings. So since we're not matching on generic name headings, there should be an R08 report. And that report shows up when we do not match on generic name headings. If we do match on generic name headings, that report is not um, does not exist as part of the results. So let's click on that. We'll bring it up. So the R08 lists generic name headings which would have matched on an authority record but didn't since that 3.1 is unchecked. So since this is unchecked, these headings show up on this R08. So that means that these headings would have matched against an authority record. Let's take a look at this first entry, this Bukharajev uh, entry right there. So I'll click on a link I have here. And it brings up the uh, LC. authority record for this particular heading. And well, again, we'll go back to the report just so we can see. So we have this Buka Harajev, Raiz Gatic, maybe. And we look at variants. One of the variants in here is that exact same heading. So if we had matched on this, it would have updated that 700 field right here would have updated that 700 field to Bukharajev, well, I have got teach, right? And so it would have updated that original one with this uh, diacritic to this one that lacks that diacritic. So R08 can be useful to kind of look through the results and consider whether or not you want to maybe tweak or modify the profile going forward, either for the full file, for additional samples, or for special or different other collections. So let me close out of that. Okay, and then uh, another one, 3.4, split headings. 
The example I always give, and this shows right here, is that if you have nurses and nursing in a singular heading, uh, if you have this 3-4 checked, it would split that out into two distinct headings, nurses and then a, another heading that says nursing, for example. Um, but the R17 identifies headings that would have split up into multiple headings. So let's look at R17. There it is. Great. Okay, so, but since this is unchecked, the split heading here, this means that these headings that were in R17 would have split out into um, two or more headings. Okay, and sometimes we've uh, seen splits happen where one heading becomes, for instance, uh, like four or five headings, which is kind of interesting. Anyways, let's choose something at random here. Uh, and this is really random. I, I always, like, when I was going through practice for this, uh, webinar. I would choose a different one every time just to see. Anyways, though, I'll choose this one right here. So 00275-4736. We want to copy that. We can either hit Control C or right click and copy. And we'll go to the Mark View program again. And this time we'll hit F2. Okay, well, we have the T constraint, but you know, sometimes it's okay to not use the D constraint. So we're not going to use the T constraint this time. I'm going to go back into our text box area, highlight it, delete it, and hit paste. So now it finds the first instance of where that text that we're looking for exists in the record. In this case, that's the control number. The Alt tab, this is the control number in the report. So we can use that Mark View program to look for specific records in the original file as well as the process file. So let's do the same search. We're not going to change anything. Uh, and it's record 2598, but it's just easier just to hit F2 and search. And there it is right there. So on the sample file, let's scroll down and let's go back to our report. This is the 650 uh, second indicator zero that says environment. So that's what we're looking for. Great, so it's this one right here. It's not this one because that one has a subfield or a second indicator four, which is a local bid subject heading. So it's this one right there. Let's scroll down. And this one is exactly the same. And the reason why it's exactly the same is because this library does not want to split out these uh, headings into um, two or more headings that they could have split out into. So again, this report could be useful to look at and say, you know, maybe we do want environment to split out. Or we're OK doing that. Or maybe we want environment to split out, but we don't want trade to split out. So that, that could be uh, an opportunity to go back to Backstage and let us know. Hey, we want a little tweak to this uh, particular step right here. Okay, let me get out of this. Go back to the, the folder. And look at, just real quick, some of the Excel reports that we have. So let's look at the Excel format for names, the unmatched, um, the R07, unmatched primary headings for names. We'll double click that. So again, it's just this file right here. Double clicking it to open it. Make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on here. And in this case, uh, we can sort. We can kind of scroll through it here. We can like say, OK, uh, you know, we're going to assign all of these headings, put a highlight on them. This is going to go to Frank over in our reference. And then we're going to maybe some of these headings are going to go to Carol, you know, something like that. But you can, uh, you can assign things. You can take out certain ones. You can say, well, we've already looked at these. We don't care about these anymore, so we'll just delete those out. You can resort things. You can say, OK, I want to select just a few here. Let me scroll down, select them. We're going to sort them. Go on column B, which is the tag. Great. So we go back up here. They all start. Now all the 100s are grouped together. And then the 700s follow that. So it's something to consider as you look through the Excel report that there might be different uses that you have that the HTML reports maybe don't afford you. Let's get out of that. And then one other report we're going to look at, uh, or one other Excel report real quick, is the R06. This is the partially matched headings to LC subjects. Let's click on that one. So again, we just double clicked on this one. Let's blow it up a little bit. So. You can see it. Yeah, right there. Okay. So this is a partially matched headings report. This shows you uh, it bolds the part of the match that we were able to 
match against uh, within that particular heading, okay? So like this uh, Flaubert Gustav, 1821 to 1880, there's other information on that heading, and we weren't able to match all of that, but we were able to match the subfield A and the subfield D. And in fact, if you go to this particular record, we'll copy that, and we'll go to the mark view, put F2, and paste that in there, and we'll scroll down, and you notice that there's a lot of these Flaubert Gustav right, entries here, this one, this one. But the one in our report is a 6010, so it's the LC heading that we concern ourselves with. So we got Flaubert Gustav with the date. So up, we have an authority record that we delivered that has Flaubert Gustav with that date on there. Then we also have these other subdivisions that did not match, but we still retain them, because that's how it came to us originally. And we have different um, color-coded meanings behind this, okay? So one of the meanings is that if it's green, uh, these are subdivisions that we think are valid. We have a table that we match against, that we kind of validate against in order to provide some guidance for you. So we think green are ones that you can safely ignore. We think this is okay. Um, if it's red, we think these are subdivisions that <clears throat> are possibly invalid. And so maybe that's something to consider as you look through those. Then if, if it's brown, we kind of think these are subdivisions that that have the wrong subfield marker. Maybe instead of subfield X poetry, it should be subfield V poetry. So as you look through some of these reports, it might be helpful to say, well, I don't have to look at the ones with green. <clears throat> I can look at the ones that have red or brown and kind of go from there and decide whether or not I want to do anything there for maybe one of them has a typo or there's other things that are uh, not working out right. And this could also be useful if you notice something that, <clears throat> excuse me, where um, it, it, we label it as red, and you might go through and say, hey, I think this is actually right here, and so you can go back to us and, and let us know we can adjust things on our side. I'm going to show you one more report. We're going to go back up to the HTML versions here, and we're going to look at the R122, okay? So, I'm just going to pick this middle one here. We have the same. When you don't know what to do, consider R122. Um, it's not really a thing. We just made it up. But this report can be, uh, report can be especially useful for sample reviews. So I'll bring it up here. And let me just go back real quick here. When I, when I select it, it's 16 megs in size. It can be pretty big. It can be 33, 20. And so when you first bring it up, it hasn't fully loaded yet. It takes uh, you know a little bit of time, not too long, but it does take a little bit of time for it to load on your side. So if you go down to the end, and I just did that, you can see the scroll bar jumping up. It's still kind of loading here, which is okay. But let me go back up here. And I'm, I'm going to try to increase the zoom. And because it's kind of still loading, it's going to take a little bit of time for the zoom. Here it goes. And we'll probably see another zoom coming on here. But this, as it's doing the zoom, this does a side-by-side -side comparison of the original record as you send it in to us, and then the enriched or processed record is on the right-hand side. Any changes that were made to the record will be highlighted between the two versions there. And so this can be really useful to look at um, perhaps new fields that we've added or just minor changes, like for, well, not minor, but for example, this 260 field was changed to a 264 uh, indicator one. So that can be useful as you're kind of looking through a sample result to say whether or not uh, the processing behaved as expected. You can look through the mark view. You can look through the reports. You can look through the R122 in order to have that side-by-side in-depth uh, version as far as what happened. One thing to keep in mind with the R122 is that because of the large size, it can be uh, prepare yourself for the amount of time it might take. So. For those of you that like to spend a little bit of extra time on your review of, of, of these results from your vendor, uh, be prepared that it might take a little bit of time to kind of sort through or at least go through some of these reports themselves. The neat thing about the R122 that our programmers have added is uh, it gives a range of your control numbers that are covered within that report. And so that's kind of nice. And so if you notice, well, this particular record I noticed was, um, I want to look at that in the R122, but where do I look? you can consider the file name itself, and then go ahead and navigate right there. Okay, so, so 
Conclusion, uh, sample size. You know, one thing to keep in mind when reviewing files is what sample size are you comfortable with? Uh, do you randomly want to check up to 10% of the file to check for consistency in expectation versus results? Uh, we don't want you to hesitate to come back to us with questions or concerns or issues that you've discovered. And sometimes it's good to create a checklist if possible and go through it, verifying that what you wanted to see happen with the sample or set of results actually did happen. The other good thing about this webinar and about these tools and resources is that um, you can use them on further or, or sorry, future or other kinds of projects. If you re receive a set of mark records from backstage for catalog. Nate, I did see, and I want to thank Leanne and Casey and Chad, because I think they were able to address most of our questions as we went through the webcast today. Um, is there any additional questions that people have that they weren't able to um, address to the chat box at this time? And again, a reminder that this presentation of the webcast has been, has been recorded. Any additional questions that you might have or if you feel like they might be a little bit longer than what we might be able to address here, please feel free to reach out to your project manager. And then also um, the info at dslw.com mailbox. We're happy to address questions there as well. We actually, um, Alyssa will be sending this okay, out like in an email. Sorry, go ahead, Nate. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Bethany. I was just going to say, uh, just, as far as the questions, there are no additional questions right now, but I also want to reiterate with Bethany that we will send out the recording in a future email with the link to this presentation. Great. Thank you again, Nate. I think the webcast was really wonderful. We appreciate everybody's interaction and their questions. And again, please look forward to uh, the recording. Uh, we will send that out to an email link to you, and it will be shareable with your colleagues at your institution or uh, fellow groups that you might be working in as well. Thanks so much, and have a great rest of the day.